Are these the last day? Do you hear about the war in Israel? I heard about the rapture. Have you heard about that? Be ready. 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 Be and the Chancellor of Word Wise Bible College. And he's here to answer any questions that you may have about the end times or the book of Revelation in five to seven points because these are scary times and you deserve answers. So here's the first question, Dr. D. You ready? Yes, sir. Can you explain the rapture? Can I explain the yes. rapture? My, my goodness, what a weight on my shoulders. <laughs> I, I'm going to give it a try. Okay, let's okay. go. Well, God bless everyone out there. And I'm going to answer your question in five to seven points. Okay. So just get ready. All right. Can I explain the rapture? Well, first thing I want you to know in point number one is that the rapture is known in the scripture as the blessed hope. All right. That's the blessed hope. Mm -hmm. And the blessed hope is the blessed hope of the church. And it, the rapture has come as a result of Christ made the promise in John the 14th chapter. I go to prepare a place for you, and that you is the church. That where I am, ye may be also. And so that promise is fulfilled in 1 Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself shall descend with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, the trump of the Lord, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So that was the fulfillment of that prophecy. Now, uh, point number two, it said there are no specific signs. I want you to know, people say, oh, this, it's got the sign that the, the rapture is about to happen. No, those, there are no specific signs that the rapture is going to happen. The rapture is what you call imminent. It can happen anytime, any place. In fact, it happened so quick until it happened an hour ago. Mm. It's imminent. Wow. There are no signs for the rapture. Mm. No one knows the day nor the hour when the rapture is going to take place. Uh, the next point is that the rapture is an event that is for the church and the church alone. The church is the ecclesia. It's the one that's been set aside for, for Christ as his bride. Next point is that the, the key to understanding uh, who will we be raptured is lies in the words that the dead in Christ mm -hmm. and we the dead in Christ and we now the dead in Christ is those that were who died uh, after the the day that the Holy Spirit fell the church was birthed and those all the way to the rapture of the church those are the dead in Christ those are the ones that's considered to be the church of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The next point is no one will be able to see the rapture. I, wow. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you can't see the rapture. Okay. You're going to be the rapture mm -hmm. because you know it says in Corinthians that we shall be changed in the moment of a twinkling of an eye. Now a gunshot as fast as a bullet can travel is something like 28,000 miles an hour, but light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Wow. In fact, in one second, the light goes around the world eight times. Mm. And if you can't see a bullet coming mm. out at 28,000 miles an hour, mm -hmm. 16 to 28,000, how are you going to see something going 186,000 miles per second? And so you're not going mm. to see the rapture. Mm. You're going to be the rapture. Mm. And guess what? You won't get your chance to fly. Be quiet mm. because you're going to be going with Christ at 186,000 miles per second. Uh, thank God. I answered it in five to seven points. And thank you. Now here's another inquiry question that people want to know, Dr. D. Yes, sir. Who is the Antichrist? Who is the Antichrist? Well, that is a good one. Who is the Antichrist? Now over the years, numerous people have been pegged as being um, the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Hitler, Caesar Nero, hmm. Henry Kissinger, and you name it. <laughs> people have defined and pointed yeah, out good. various people as being the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. So who is the Antichrist? They want to know who is he, where is he now? Mm -hmm. Is this, this man or that man the Antichrist? Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible first mentions the Antichrist 
in the book of Daniel, in the seventh chapter of the book of Daniel, mm -hmm. and he's called the little horn, and he's coming up among the nations mm -hmm. in the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. And um, and then the Bible also lets us know, uh, over in the book of John, that the spirit of Antichrist is already here with us. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of Antichrist is, a, is another topic, and I'll get to that. It says, but in the second chapter of Thessalonians, we learn that the Antichrist, a.k.a. the beast, will not be revealed until after the church is raptured. So when people are trying to say that Antichrist is here, and Christ, Antichrist is there, this man is, that means they don't know eschatology. Mm -hmm. Because if you know eschatology, it's not all in the book of Revelation, eschatology is a study of the end times. Mm -hmm. You go all the way in Matthew, Mark, Ezekiel, but in Thessalonians it lets us know that the Antichrist will not even be revealed until after the church is has been raptured. Mm -hmm. Now in the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation, we also learn where the beast, where the Antichrist, the beast himself, if they're the same entity, where he originates from. Mm -hmm. And where he will come to establish his his kingdom right. uh, on earth. And it says in that 13th chapter, And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Mm. And the sea is a metaphor for people. Mm. So it mm. tells us that the, this Antichrist is going to come out of a group of people, wow. the metaphor which is the Mediterranean Sea. Mm. So we learn that the Antichrist is going to come from the people that's around the Mediterranean Sea, mm. which is going to be the revised Roman Empire. Mm. Now, and we also learn, we learn in our school, that the man Antichrist will rise from the people of the revised Roman Empire, and therefore he is not here yet. Now, the people in the revised Roman Empire today is known as the EU, or the European Union. And you know what? That's a story for another time. But I just answered your question of five to seven points. Question. You ready for this one? I'm ready. Um, who are the 144,000, and are they Jehovah's Witnesses? How well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're asking you. <laughs> Well, well let's, we're going to dive into it. I'm going to try to ask you a question in five to seven points. All right, let's do it. <laughs> okay, and this is a question that's been around for a long time because not only uh, has the Guild of Witnesses uh, declared that they are the 144,000, there's been numerous groups over mm. time that claim that they're the 144,000. Wow. Okay. Well, I'd like to go by what the Bible has to say about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the revelation answer man, let's see if we can give you an answer to it. Okay. Point number one. First, the issue of the 144,000 has been a question all, all for in time for as long as it's been written in scripture. And so over the decades, numerous groups have claimed to be the illustrious 144,000. Mm -hmm. Point number two. We read about this group of the 144,000 in chapter 7 and chapter 14 in the book of Revelation and I'm not going to go there but turn to chapter 7 and when you get through uh, chapter 14 and it says in number 3 point number 3 it said if you now if you're not a student or knowledgeable of end time scripture or eschatology mm -hmm. see it will be difficult for you to defend Whatever position you hold mm. on this topic, whether it's pro or con, mm -hmm. because really you need to have some study into uh, the book of Revelation. And you know why? Because knowing the time and the setting and the prophetic purpose mm -hmm. of the interest on the scene will mm -hmm. answer uh, the identification question. Mm -hmm. God has unfinished business mm. with the Jews. Okay. And that's why they have come on the scene. And mm -hmm. If you know that, then you would know uh, mm -hmm. who they are. You would know that it's not, you know, everything is done in the time and the season. Mm -hmm. You would know that right now is not the time nor the season for mm -hmm. the 114. Mm -hmm. uh, next point is that uh, first thing, the first thing we realize is that the 144,000 that even is not even spoken about, is not even talked about mm. until the church is raptured. Okay. They don't appear anywhere in the Bible until mm -hmm. uh, the church is raptured. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and therefore they're found 
the church is raptured in chapters uh, or chapter four. The church age is chapter two and three. That's mm -hmm. we exist in chapter two or three. Mm -hmm. Chapter four, the church is raptured, okay. and now the hundred and forty-four thousand doesn't appear until chapter seven. Hmm. And that's in the book of Revelation is in chronological order okay. until you get to a parenthetical mm. and that chapter seven is what we call a parenthetical. Mm -hmm. It's a story within the story. Okay. But keep in mind the church age is over. So the hundred and forty four thousand doesn't appear until the church age is over. Now the last point I'm going to bring up is is that so through the process of logical deduction uh, what is the period what is the period that is between the rapture of the church and the second coming of Christ and it's in that period of time that the 144,000 appear now you got the the rapture of the church mm -hmm. and the, the seven year period of the return of Christ so it's seven years difference between that rapture and the and the millennial kingdom of Christ and the 144,000 fall in that period of time. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The Jehovah Witnesses are not there. Mm. It's not them. What it is, is the, it's the 144,000, the Bible names them, they are the Jews of every tribe of Israel. Because it is the tribulation period yes. that they come on the scene. So they can't be the Jehovah Witnesses. They yes. come on the scene and the tribulation period. And so I've answered Absolutely your question powerful. basically in five to seven points. Absolutely powerful. All right, Dr. D, now here's another question. A very compelling question. You ready for this one? I'm, I'm ready for You it. sure? Uh, they call you Dr. D, the revelation uh, man, the revelation uh, answer uh, man, so here it is. Okay. How do I here. know I will not go to hell? How do you know that you won't go to hell? Yes. Okay, well, That's the question. Okay, well, let me see if I can... Give you some, if Help I can us. answer it, can I just give you just a little insight on that? Help us. Okay. First of all, there is no way that anyone can tell you that you will not go to hell. Oh. It's impossible. Hmm. That decision is not in God's hands nor in Satan's. God can't tell you you're going to hell or not. Neither can Satan. Hmm. God said, I'll lay before you a path. You make the choice. There's a difference between predestination and predetermination. Okay. Because you have to make the determination as to which way you go. Yes. God doesn't push you down the road. Mm -hmm. So it's not that God's hands or the devil's hand. You are the only person that can answer that question. You are the only one that have the power to make the decision. Mm -hmm. You are. Mm -hmm. And as an outsider among the world's outsiders, as a man of God and a, trust, uh, a, tr a truster of his word of God, what I can guarantee is this, yes, sir. is that you will not go to hell if you accept Christ as your Savior mm. and allow the Holy Spirit to transform your life. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You will for sure not go to hell. Uh, the saved, born again person has been adopted into grace, mm. to the grace of God through their faith in the Savior. And the Savior, Jesus means Savior. We know that Jesus Christ means Messiah, He anoints you. We know that Lord means that He's your Master, but He can't be your Messiah. He can't be your Lord if He's not your Savior. All right. Because Jesus means Savior. His mm -hmm. name is not Jesus, it's Lord. But on earth, he, we need the Savior. Mm -hmm. And so if He is your Savior, mm -hmm. and you allow the Holy Spirit, Spirit to transform your life, mm -hmm. you will not go to hell. All right. The saved and born again person has been adopted into grace. Grace is undeserved. You can't earn it. Mm -hmm. You can't buy it. You can't rent it. Yes, we just have to accept the grace of God. Mm -hmm. and, and through your faith in Jesus, the Savior, grace frees us from the law of sin and shame. Mm -hmm. Therefore, according to wow. Romans, Twelve and one, for you that have been washed in grace, washed in the blood, mm. transformed by the Holy Spirit, yes. there is therefore now no condemnation mm. to those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm. 
in Christ means that you are a spirit of a part of the not the organization, the church. Come on. But the living organization, the church. And there is, and that is what he calls the church. Mm -hmm. So if you have no condemnation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't just walk into a courthouse mm -hmm. and say, I want a trial. Where the police will bring a criminal in the court, they'll take you out the court because you haven't committed the crime. They'll say, you get out. You have to qualify to get in that judgment. Mm -hmm. And since there is no condemnation mm -hmm. in your life, mm -hmm. Christ has washed you, there is no mm -hmm. reason to go before judgment. Why? Because there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, you cannot go to hell because you have been, you've accepted the Savior and you've been transformed. You have committed no crime because you've been justified. That means just as if you've never sinned. So, if you die tonight, what would you spend eternity? You would spend eternity with God. Wow. And that's my answer to you in five to seven points. God bless. You know, Dr. Dobson, and for those of you out there, and I'm sure you would agree with me on this, you know, as you were talking and helping us out with that, I was taking notes. You know, I was always wondering why, and I'm sure that you were always wondering why before yes. you started this. What would happen if we did not know if the rapture happened, when does the rapture happen? Why we never learned what you just taught us just now? And I think you guys out there have asked that question of your ministry, your pastors, because what Dr. D, the Revelation Answer Man, helps us understand is how the story ends, what to look for, what are the signs of the time? So, to get in touch with Dr. D, yes, sir. Dr. Curtis Dotson, the Revelation Answer Man of Wordwise Bible College, just dial 909-374-9462 for more information so you can stay informed, educated, and updated. Like we always say at this time, we'll see y'all at the top because the bottom is way too crowded. Bye for now. <laughs>